Hello everyone and today we're gonna continue covering London system with E6 um, and we're gonna take a look at the quite important sidelines uh, that are related to Black's Queen B6 um, so let's go right into this and if Black plays the Knight of 6 on the first move usually I play with White Knight F3 in order to avoid certain lines including that early Queen B6 as um, for example Bishop F4 c5 of course there is the whole um, uh, move d5 with a lot of things like queen b6 knight c3 and um, queen takes b2 bishop d2 but we're not going to go into that today because that kind of doesn't fit into this e6 uh, line so uh, I, I want to show the difference because be, between um, early bishop f4 and um, after knight f3 so let's go um, into this line so we can see what is the difference. Um, here I think knight f3 is uh, probably the best move for white, which is, uh, you can see it's on my main line. So we're gonna make this the main move. Um, and there are other moves in this position, including knight c3, which I think is probably um, okay, but it leads to a forced draw. For example, after queen b2, I have to play knight b5. If I play knight e2, then black just can get this pawn and um, get away with his queen back, for example, to a5. And I don't think uh, white has uh, uh, enough compensation for this, even if he plays something like g4, uh, which is uh, still pretty interesting, of course, in uh, trying to develop the bishop to g2, but I don't think that white has enough compensation here. For example, black just plays d5 and... Um, um, well, the, it's uh, usually the, these lines are a lot of fun to analyze because the resulting positions are kind of absolutely crazy here, and we can see here that black is indeed um, probably lost after this, right? So um, very tricky line. Uh, so g4, so maybe e6 first, and then after white develops his bishop to g2, now you play d5, um, and uh, even then it's uh, not so clear, right? Because you sort of get this um, knight b5 tricks, so knight fd7, castles, and then of course black can probably play a6 some point, but not right now because, uh, see, it's still um, still very complicated. Uh, Rook e1, um, again, um, if, you, if you analyze stuff well, uh, you can play almost anything. So the computer shows here g3 line, but I kind of like this g4 more aggressive way of playing. And um, so let's see, if um, black plays h6 here, then you have bishop g2. And I think uh, now you have plenty of compensation for the pawn, right? So the thing is that the black doesn't have to take on d4 here immediately, uh, sort of open up the line. He should probably play queen a3 here. And if rook b1, then um, then uh, we can think about playing just d6, closing this um, this bishop on f4, right? So, um, um, so uh, yeah, so this is not so simple now. So if rook b3, for example, queen a5, uh, you can play rook b5. And um, black can play either queen d8 because of queen c7, this is also possible. But then after rook c4, white's rook on c4 is kind of kind of curious, right? e5, for example, bishop g5, and then it's d5, so bishop g3. And black still has to move his queen, otherwise d5 for the threat. So a lot of fun lines here. In the end, it is uh, probably playable for both colors. But um, let's not uh, take the risk here. And uh, give me a second. All right, and welcome back. Uh, and... Um, now, so um, knight c3 is playable, however, in my game versus Ivanchuk, uh, I played knight b5. So again, knight g2 requires a lot of analysis and might be as well a very playable move, especially with the modern engines. Um, I, I, I like this really idea followed by g4, right? So, um, so g4 is the idea for white. So we black, again, play something like takes, takes, queen a3. And queen a5, then we have this g4 thing going on, right? So that that's the kind of thing that uh, we're, we're looking forward to. And um, in the game, I played the more standard idea for white, which is knight b5. And I missed, unfortunately, this knight d5 trick. And uh, uh, we can see a small difference here. Um, because the black pawn is not on d5, he's able to play knight d5 and attack our bishop on f4. 
right and at the same time cover the c7 square so white is more or less forced to play rook b1 here and there is such a move as a3 but the resulting positions after a6 again during the game i was uh, kind of afraid of knight c3 and uh, because now I'm forced to go into this absolutely forced line with rook c1 and there's this of course intermediate move e5 and I have to go into this uh, line which uh, after c4 which is the only but good enough move um, yeah this, this is this is starting to, to be absolutely crazy and uh, after knight c6 I have to give back the exchange black uh, can play bishop c3 check and then put the bishop on a5, sort of creating the threat of capturing the knight on a8. And white has to be very precise here, but black has to be pre really precise as well. He has to play this b5 move, which is the only move which holds the uh, equality. And after rook c8, it's very likely that the game ends in a draw here. Uh, but uh, again, you have to see all the lines. And um, obviously, during the game, I didn't see that stuff. Um, and... Um, I was afraid to go into here and of course black can also play a6 here forcing white to go into this rook b1 and now if he doesn't want to um, go for the repetition like I did against uh, Vasily by playing rook b1 rook a1 repetition then white will have to play queen c1 here and then we are faced again with a major um, very complex um, irrational uh, material um, um, balance um, or imbalance uh, equation here and of course uh, there is again this idea of e5 followed by c4 black is sort of uh, saving his uh, pawn formation very strong pawn formation on the queen side and he is uh, trying to uh, go for the structure where he has a pair of bishops a pair of rooks um, and potential uh, uh, pass pawns later right um and versus white's uh, lone queen which is probably not enough for white so i think that black has more chances in this position um so um in order to uh, you know there's such idea sometimes in these lines if white plays bishop c4 tries to trap black queen by playing rook b1 but uh, not in this particular case because after e6 um black will black queen will get uh, out by playing queen c3 check queen a5 and white will be stuck with a really bad structure here so this doesn't quite work for white so after knight d5 i played uh, here um rook b1 and we agreed on a draw here after this um, uh, uh, after these moves because if i play bishop g3 here then uh, black will just obviously take on d4 and um, white will be stuck with some choices here uh, should I take on d4 but after e5 the huge threat of bishop b4 check is coming um, attacking my king on e1 and black is better so uh, I'll have to trade probably with the queens uh, but after this uh, queen trade uh, black can just play knight a6 and I evaluated this position at first I thought that I was um, uh, pressing here because I have really powerful knight on b5 so this is ki kind of like a Volga game position but uh, in reality you know black just plays d6 and um, uh, there is no way I can um, uh, get through so maybe knight rook b4 but still uh, this position is uh, simply better for black and uh, he completes some development uh, he has extra pawn and my king is kind of weak in the center so uh, instead of uh, playing for the c4, white probably should play knight f3, and uh, then he might and bishop c4, right? Uh, that's the only way probably to try to play for some compensation. But again, this is not the, what you want to get as white uh, in the opening. You really need the queens on board to have um, any compensation. So um, which is why I decided uh, that um, these are not so great for white and knight f3 i believe is my stronger move because if black takes on b2 now uh, if he plays d5 then uh, white is just better after knight c3 uh, probably better not much better but uh, slightly better and the threat is knight a4 so he plays cd4 now you still have knight b5 and uh, you can take both with the queen and uh, this uh, end game is certainly to white advantage thanks to this very strong knight on b5 and uh, a really bad knight on a6 which will be through the cutoff by white's playing c3 followed by a4 and knight on a6 is kind of bad so this is a pretty big advantage for white so um and if black plays a6 then he has to contend with knight a4 move 
followed by c3 and b4 for example uh, which is probably okay for black uh, but then again this position uh, is very similar to the french game uh, exception is the white e3 pawn is on e5 and um, uh, probably um, probably black is okay to be honest uh, but again a lot of analysis are required you can go for all sorts of crazy things here and obviously um, this position is much better for white as two pawns uh, are stronger than black uh, minor piece here so um, a lot of analysis are further required you don't have to play knight a4 here um, i think taking on c5 and uh, just going for the standard bishop b2 the 95 queen d4 trade um, is also not bad uh, if you're really not fond of all this, uh, then you can consider other moves. But let's go back to Black's normal uh, position. 95 is actually one of the critical moves here. Um, it's absolutely critical, and we're gonna return to it uh, in a, in a moment. So first, let's see uh, Queen B2. And the idea is that uh, you simply sacrifice this b2 pawn for the lead in the development. And now Black has to be quite careful. Oftentimes these positions they transpose, uh, for example, after knight c6, d takes c5, you have this um, e6, and then rook b1, queen c3, and then bishop b5 or bishop uh, d3, sort of transpositions. And um, again, uh, bishop c5, for example, then um, rook b3, right, followed by rook b5, and um, this bishop on c5 is under constant pressure, uh, castles with a threat of knight b1. A uh, huge threat of knight b1 and um, black is stuck uh, in, uh, under attack here knight c4 the threat is rook b3 and uh, black is really you know that queen on um on c3 is really bad so black took that pawn and wasted so many tempests with his queen and instead he should should probably take uh, here and uh, play bishop b7 and go for the structure and after rook b5 Knight c4, queen a4, I believe knight d6 probably should be played. And again, we are getting into a lot of uh, sidelines, but I believe that um, ultimately white has, uh, especially in this type of positions where you get the bishop on d6, very, very strong bishop, which prevents black from castling. Uh, black, is just much, uh, black is just much worse. For example, knight e4, and rook b4, knight e4, b4, bishop e4, and um, a very strong attack is coming after knight g5. Queen h5, and th again, thanks to this incredible bishop on d6. So this is the kind of position that you're kind of looking for with white to get uh, when black plays queen b6, right? That is the kind of position to get. Um, there is the sideline with uh, knight d5. Uh, the other greedy move would be to play pawn takes d4, and uh, black now has to be careful. He probably has to play queen c3. Again, um, this is the line where... Uh, black actually is um, under taking a lot of risks, you know, taking or grabbing all those pawns, you know, neglecting the development. And for example, if he takes on a2, then after knight c4, he's in huge trouble. The rook a1 here is a huge threat, of course, attacking this uh, queen. And uh, black is just simply worse. He has to give up all that material that he just earned, uh, or not earned, but uh, took, right? So he has to play queen c3. And now I think uh, white has a pleasant choice between just taking d4 and going for this sort of position, uh, d5 and rook b3 followed by queen b1, which is the main idea. You're sort of threatening to take this pawn on b7 before black managed to bring his queen to d8, right? And if black plays b6, then um, uh, rook b5 or bishop b5 or a4, uh, even rook b5 is okay. If you want the draw, you can have it by playing rook b5, queen c3, rook b3, because there is no queen c6 due to bishop b5. So white has a draw in the pocket, and the question is, can, does he have more? And of course, uh, after bishop b5 check, for example, castles, I think that uh, black should be worse here, objectively, because he is way behind in development, and um, a4 was another interesting move here. The idea is that um, if black takes on b5, then of course you take with the pawn and now the queen on a5 will be under huge threat after white's queen b2 castles followed by uh, the rook going to a1 attacking this queen and um, probably black will have to play with something better play e6 and then castles bishop e7 and then <clears throat> a lot of again a lot of possibilities for white including knight e5 here or queen b2 
And the idea is that if you castle, then again, rook a1, a6, bishop goes to d3, knight c6, c3. And <clears throat> this queen on a5 is under, under constant uh, attack, uh, potentially, with the bishop going to c7, to d2, followed by c4, as black doesn't have this b5 move because of a b5. Uh, but um, again, this is not very, this is a very complicated line. I really advise to play this line more as white because um, it's very risky. So um, knight d2 and the only move which is absolutely critical here is knight d5. And after rook b1, uh, white and black will have to play queen c3, queen a2, then bishop c4. So queen c3, rook b3, queen a5. We really want to keep that bishop, so let's play bishop g3, e6. And I believe I had a couple of games with Landerman in this line. And... Uh, those were pretty exciting games. I played bishop d3, I think. Or it's possible he, we had this uh, game with the exchange on d4 first. So after knight b4, bishop e2. And uh, again, um, this was definitely not our game. But um, white here has plenty of compensation for the sacrifice pawn. As black has uh, wasted a lot of time with his queen. Queen b6, queen b2, queen c3, queen a5. It's one, two, three, four moves with the queen. One, two, three moves with the knight. Uh, you are finishing the development with white. And um, with the queen going to b1 and potentially c3, c4 break, uh, white definitely has plenty of compensation for the missing pawn. So I, I recommend this line for white. And um, we are going back to this position, which is the key position, actually. So instead of queen b2 and instead of other moves... Um, Again, cd4, I think the best way to play this would be simply to take with the queen and uh, to transpose uh, into this endgame where white is definitely better um, in this endgame. So, um, the London, this is a standard London kind of stuff. Um, probably black can survive, but again, you have the minority attack on the queen's, on the king side, a uh, very strong uh, pawn formation on the queen side. And the, in, in general, the endgames are really good for white in the London system. So the, the absolutely critical line for um, for black here would be to play knight d5. This is the key move of this entire line. And I think uh, everything hinges on the analysis uh, how good is this move. The idea is, of course, black really wants to capture white's uh, dark squared bishop on f4. And um, if, uh, black, if white plays something silly like uh, bishop g3, then black just takes on b2 and after forced... Um, Knight d2, knight c3 forces the trade of the queens, and after e6, black simply pawn up with a winning uh, position, right? Technical winning position. So white has to be precise here. He doesn't have time for bishop g3, nice it is. And the question is, can he play something like bishop e5? I think it doesn't make sense because it uh, helps black to develop further, bring the knight and further with the tempo attacking this bishop again. So the only critical line would be here to play dc5. And um, now black is forced to take on b2, um, because if you take on c5, then white plays bishop g3, and the whole point of knight on d5 is kind of lost, right? Um, if you play slowly, like d6, then c4, knight goes back to f6, knight c3, white gets the um, nice uh, position, which is more reminiscent of the uh, hedgehog type of position, but with the black queen on c5, having spent a lot of time, and um, white is just probably better here. So um, black has to take on b2. This is forced because uh, you cannot take on d5 right now, unfortunately. As uh, the knight is in price and you have to waste time playing uh, queen b3. Uh, knight e5, for example, is like really bad. Because black just takes on b1 and then he can play e6. So that, that is the reality of this position. You cannot sacrifice the stuff. And if you play queen b3, then black is just uh, going back to queen f6. Although you can probably juggle around uh, with, uh, with anal analyzing this position further, as um, maybe uh, white has plenty of compensation for the, um, for the exchange. Uh, actually, actually, it doesn't look so bad, right? <clears throat> so th in fact, this looks pretty, pretty interesting. Um, I mean, knight d5 is a huge, huge threat. Uh, obviously, knight b5 is also a possibility, and the idea is to play knight d6, <clears throat> getting out of that famous London bishop on d6. <clears throat> and I would say <clears throat> black um, is kind of suffering here, right? 
So this actually might be interesting. Uh, also, 94 looks uh, very interesting with the same idea. And then if check, king d2, knight c6, rook g1, right? Rook g1 with a huge threat of the bishop moving anywhere, capturing this queen. So knight has to go to a5, followed by queen a4, knight c6. Uh, the queen is looking to get back to b3. And, um, and again, a very complicated position. Uh, queen b3 probably forces the draw. And uh, of course, you also have the option to play this position. And um, queen b2, for example, bishop b5, queen b4, take, take, and uh, knight d4, right? So this bishop on d6 uh, probably has... a uh, um, enough um, value to provide the white with the compensation for the missing exchange, but that's not exactly what we're looking for. So um, queen d5 is actually quite playable here, and uh, followed by um, queen b3, right? And as we have seen, this is also very interesting uh, exchange sack. Uh, probably black has to play carefully. But I was looking at the queen b2 line, um, bishop b5 lines. For some reason, I thought that this was more um, pressing, but now I'm not quite sure. So maybe queen d5 is actually is the reason why black doesn't play knight d5 line anyway, right? This is very rare lying at all. But let's take a look at the bishop e5. Uh, you have this um, line with queen c5 because if you play knight c3, there's uh, queen b2 coming, and you grab that. Um, um, yeah, the knight on b6 is really bad after a4 is a huge, uh, huge uh, a5, and black is just worse, right? So black has to take this pawn on c5, and um, after knight b3, uh, if queen b4, then you have this very important a3 move. Uh, important because uh, you have this rook c1 idea. If you take on d1, go for this line, and um, this is very close to being equal. Uh, very close to being equal, probably slightly better for white, but very close to equal position. So I think maybe um, rook c1 is better here, and then black is forced to play knight c6, and you kind of get your bishop back. So black is forced to sacrifice this knight. He gets four pawns uh, for the knight, but you have lead on the development, and... Um, a lot of pieces in play, which is more of a end game, uh, of a middle game material, and I think um, uh, white should definitely have compensation here. So th th this is um, this is again um, uh, kind of complicated stuff. But um, queen c6 is another move, and here uh, we have the c5 idea. Knight d4 probably not to be recommended because after bishop d4. You, I don't think you can play for more than a draw because if you queen something like this, then, um, yeah, then e5, right? e5 and black is better. So um, yeah, no, so there is no point to play for more. So I suggest to play bishop d4, just make a draw here, and um, that's the reason I think knight bd4 is not that great. C5 is probably better to prevent the simply to go for this. Um, a compensation for the missing pawn, but with it trying to get the c5 pawn to prevent blacks playing uh, d6 or b6, right? And uh, this pawn will be kind of really hammering down on black's development. So e6 probably, followed by rook c1, and again, black is uh, kind of very, kind of very unpleasant position because uh, the queen on c6 has no safe safe squares and. Um, because of that queen, uh, the bishop on c8 will be underdeveloped, and if white fully develops his pieces here, uh, he will be uh, definitely having a huge, um, huge uh, initiative here, right? A lot of possibilities based on the squares on um, d6, and for example, black plays uh, queen d5, you have queen c2, and if knight c6, then um, even, queen c uh, bish even bishop c4 trying to win a tempo, or, um, yeah, this doesn't look so bad, right? Uh, just the castle, uh, bishop b7, and um, rook d1 maybe even, queen h5, queen b2, and uh, probably black can uh, survive this, but I, I, I really think that white is better here. Maybe black can survive this, yeah. Um, we don't have that many pieces, but it requires further analysis, and um, so this was the uh, the line where uh, black plays um, 
uh, where you play bishop f2, f4 on the second move and black has this option of playing knight d5, right? So, which is the reason why I try to play uh, knight f3 on the second move. And if black plays e6, bishop f4, for example, c5 is a very common move. Next time we're going to take a look at the b6 line or some bishop d6 side line. I think to be perfectly honest, I think b6 is probably the best line for black. Um, because uh, you keep the option of um, uh, putting that pawn on d5 at some point, right? Uh, but we'll get to that later. So, um, c5 is still one of the major moves. And let's go back to, uh, we play e3. Just a side note, if you play c3, you have to be ready for queen b6 here, right? Because if you play queen b3, then after black takes on d4, um, take on d4 immediately or take on b6 and uh, play this end game, which I think... Um, should be a slightly better for um, uh, for white, but it's 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 now this is very complicated end game, very complicated to be honest. And um, if you take with the pawn on d4, then um, knight c6, and um, this might be a safer choice for white. But I don't think you can pretend uh, that you get any advantage, even though black has double pawns on the b file. It's not easy to get to them. It's not easy, especially with the bishop on d2, right? Um, you definitely don't want to play queen c1, and that is the reason why I, I think e3 is just the better move. Uh, because black, if you play c3, black can also just take on d4 first and then play queen b6, and now you'll be actually forced to go and sack the pawn and uh, play something like this, right? And bishop d2, which is uh, probably not bad, um, but you, you, you got to know your lines of the bishop b4. And I was just looking today at some lines like queen c3, rook b4. You can probably take on c3 here as well and uh, play this sort of stuff. Uh, but um, I don't know. This looks pretty weird to me. I, I, I try to be on the attacking side. And uh, so I say, what the hell, let the queen go. And then rook b3. And then bishop d3. And of course, d5 was a very traditional pawn sack in such positions. But... Um, I don't think I, I don't see how uh, white can uh, get more, although it is still playable, right? Castles, castles, d6, and um, you get the sort of 19th century style, so, sort of a position, probably equal game. So bishop b1, queen a4, knight g5, but it is definitely a lot of fun to tr test this stuff out, right? Uh, you have knight, rook g3, bishop h6. So bishop h6, uh, rook g3 coming. Um, definitely a lot of fun for uh, for white, but um, if you want to play something like this, uh, you need to really analyze this stuff, okay? That, which is the reason why I basically, whenever black plays c5, I prefer to answer with e3. And now we go back to our queen b6 line. Uh, the other lines need transposed to the main lines. And uh, but queen b6 now is key, and of course now we go to the main move, which is knight a3 here. And um, we're gonna go back to the bishop f4 because um, since I don't want to, I didn't want to like uh, put so many different lines, so many different transpositions into different place, and I put this into bishop f4 on the second move with the transposition effect, right? So c5, e3, knight f3. So here we look at e6 and. Um, Knight a3, I think, is the strongest move in the position because if black takes on b2, now this is actually a problem because he doesn't have this knight d5 trick anymore thanks to this um, bishop c4 move. This is the kind of trap that you guys should be aware of uh, that uh, black can easily fall if he plays queen b6 stuff because this uh, this position is basically winning for white now. Um, queen b4 check, knight d2, and uh, there is practically no defense versus rook b1. And if knight f4, then you have c3, and uh, black queen is gone, right? So that's how you win the queen. So if you, black doesn't play this, uh, he takes on f4, you still play rook b1, you still trap this queen. And I see that the computer suggests here a6. And um, both cast link works, but um, this also works if um, queen b1, Queen b1, um, a b5, you take on d5, of course, and uh, this is actually trading that important knight. And basically, queen b5 just completely winning for white, okay? 
So uh, this is the important uh, difference uh, between uh, the line where you have the knight on g1 and uh, here white definitely has more pieces in play and he has the extra addition of this knight d2 possibility to cover his king, right? Which creates this winning uh, chance. So black cannot take this pawn on b2 and usually black plays cd4 here and now we uh, enter this extremely interesting and important um, stuff because um, knight b5 is the traditional move and uh, I've played it myself uh, uh, if black plays knight a6 after ed4 you just better the important uh, the important point though here is um, if is to play is not to rush but play bishop e2 the idea is that if you play c3 too early black can play d6 but if you play bishop e2 and wait for that d6 for example now you play c4 and uh, a4 and you are better Right, you need that uh, control in the center. But if black plays d5 instead, then you are very happy, and then you play c3, a4, because again, white, uh, black is stuck with this very unfortunate knight on a6. You have this incredibly strong control over this diagonal, uh, so that um, the squares on c7, d6 are taken, um, and black is just worse. So he plays something like knight h5, <clears throat> knight e5, and um, already big problems for black. Well, the computer thinks it's uh, perfectly fine, but to be honest, after knight b8, even c4, and then c5, I think that it's much uh, more pleasant to play this position as white. For example, knight c6, bishop f4 back, uh, you know, getting this bishop on this very important square, the idea is uh, sometimes just to go for this b4 push. And um, and this is just better for, for white, right? So this is the reason why um, um, there is, again, the standard idea of knight d5 and your only move is now queen d4 and after uh, queen d4 black has to play queen d4 because if you play something like this and then after c3 uh, knight c6 you have this knight d6 check and uh, queen g7 which is the tactical um, justification but if black takes on f4 then queen f4 and uh, queen c7 knight c7 is a huge threat which forces basically to play knight a6 making sure your knight on d5 stays now and uh, black is just worse. So uh, knight, uh, uh, black has to take on d4 and we actually see in the database um, several games by um, several games by uh, played by uh, Navarra here in this line by, in, by black. Actually in January of this year he beat um, uh, some, some strong player with black in this line and uh, you have to take with the knight. I'm not sure what is this uh, pawn taking here. I don't think it should work. Yeah, in general, this doesn't work because uh, this knight on a8 doesn't get out and then black is just better. So knight of d4 um, probably has to be played. And of course, uh, in the in their game, in Navarro's game that he won early in this year, he played bishop b4 check and bishop a5. And um, he proceeded to win this game. But I, I, I think white was fine to be here, to be honest. And uh, white can just play g3 and sort of go into this... Um, Catalan structure and it's very it's probably equal probably equal nothing much um, the test of course is the main test is 97 check and Navarro lost the game against um, another strong player in, the, er, in this line but since he went for this line again I assume he prepared the um, the improvement and uh, the improvement um, uh, he played 95 bishop e2 and he played b b6 and after bishop f3 he lost the game where white's ID is traditionally basically uh, at some point play knight b5, uh, uh, sacrifice the knight on a7 and uh, get his knight back to b6 and uh, black, white managed to get a really good um, uh, version after uh, Navarro played the bishop b4 check, which is not a great move, right? So um, instead the computer of course suggests playing bishop a6 uh, which is a possible improvement for black and if uh, castles then uh, king c8 and again, now the threat is bishop b7, uh, because king protects the bishop. Uh, the whole reason is that if you play bishop b7 here in the first place, you fall for the c4, right? And bishop is unprotected. So that's the reason why black plays bishop a6. And if a4... Um, again, this is very tricky endgame. You have to be really know... You have to really know what you're doing. For example, if you play king c8 here, then after knight b5, uh, bishop b7 doesn't work, right? Because you have knight a7 and knight b6 coming out, so you have, and if you play knight c6 here, then uh, then your knight goes back and white is just winning, you keep the knight, right? 
So black has to be careful, so he plays knight c6, knight e5, knight b5, bishop b7, and white is more or less forced to go into this um, forced line, knight, uh, knight c7, I mean, um, and um, after knight b4 or a6, uh, knight b4 is, we can see uh, this game is extremely, extremely complex, and uh, but black usually gets that knight back, and if he gets that back, um, that knight back, his pair of bishops provide him with the solid advantage. So that that is that is the uh, the 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 difficulty of analyzing these lines. And after king c8, black looks uh, I think probably slightly better. And which is the line I cannot recommend this line anymore for white. And instead, I recommend to go on this knight c4. The database doesn't have many games on this line. Um, and uh, I looked a little bit, and it seems to be that knight c4 is the better version for white to play this position. And because if black plays bishop b4, then knight fd2, queen c5 is not a move, uh, because uh, several reasons. Uh, bishop d6 or c3, right? I, I kind of like c3 because uh, the idea is uh, you want to sack this pawn to open the c file, which is going to hammer black, um, you know, especially the bishop on c8. And you get your rook um, into the game with the tempo. So this is winning for white. And um, if black plays queen c6, then you just grab the spawn and you complete your development. Uh, personally, I like queen f3 here, just transposing the game into the um, end game. And if black refuses to play, play something f5, then you have this nice trick with queen g4 with the idea of bishop h4. And black cannot take on g3 because, of course, uh, he is just getting mated here. So... Um, Again, a lot of tricks uh, in London system, especially with the early development on the queen b6. And um, the, the main move for black is considered to be queen b4 check. And now uh, knight, both knight fd2 is possible, but I like the c3 move. And of course, um, uh, a3 here um, is very, very interesting. Uh, the idea is that if you black plays queen c5 after b4, queen d5... Um, you sort of keep this uh, queen on the open file, and black has two extra pawns, but um, but you have huge uh, huge lead in the development and uh, potential for for attack like b5, knight d6 check, and this is a very very dangerous position. Black, I would say, white has a very um, promising initiative uh, and attack, and of course, um, I mean, white can play b b c3 as well, and I think it's perfectly playable. And then you have to play knight d6 and go for this line with knight d2. Uh, the threat is rook c1, uh, taking on c8, so that's the reason why black doesn't have time for knight e4. And uh, if he plays queen a5, rook c1, and of course rook c5 is absolutely key move. Uh, protecting that bishop on d6, and after queen d8, bishop d3, this is a huge, um, a huge attack for white. Maybe black is fine, maybe, but uh, this bishop on d6 uh, provides plenty of compensation for you. Uh, you're down two pawns, but you have this amazing potential for the attack. For example, rook can transfer to g5, and then uh, I think white is already better, right? So huge, this like 18th century chess, uh, which I absolutely like. Again, uh, after queen b4, you can go either way. You can take on c3 here, or you can just play a3. And um, I'm not sure which one is which, because after a3, you have to be prepared for c2 check. And then you have to be ready for this sort of cra absolutely crazy wild complications. I haven't uh, analyzed them because it's simply impossible to analyze all this stuff. The threat is knight b6, of course, and knight d5 is just uh, b5, and you completely shut off, shut down Black's uh, development on the on the queen side. And I believe this is uh, much better for Black, uh, much better for White. Um, again, b4, this knight b6 is coming, right? So. Um, and the computer suggests that after this move, uh, black can play knight a6, b5, and he has to play knight e4 to keep the balance. And uh, this is uh, this is beyond the scope of the um, um, of the lecture. Um, this is uh, where your own analysis starts. And I think this is position that should be better for white overall. It just looks better thanks to the lead on the development. And um, that is the knight a3, and the black plays, uh, for example, simple chess, like d5 again, then you play knight b5, forces black to play knight a6, I like c3 here, and the bishop d7, a4, for example, bishop e7, 
Then a5 is the huge thing with idea of 96. You get the uh, bishop pair. But if black plays c4, trying to prevent that, then you have to play b3. And I believe this position, uh, both with the queen b3, is better for white. Uh, because the oh, because of the knight on a6, right? That is the main reason. Um, castles first or a5 first, probably doesn't matter. Um, and uh, this knight on a on on a6, the knight on b5 is a huge difference in the knights. And I believe uh, the knight e5 is coming, right? For example, rook c8 is terrible because the knight e5 just wins the queen. So um, this is much better for white. And um, uh, again, this is kind of position you're looking. For you're looking forward to to play with white so that completes uh, the um, uh, the kind of short um, actually not short this kind of, kind of completes uh, the um, lecture on this early queen b6 line by black we'll return to it in later uh, detail um, because obviously black can play uh, and um, delay this uh, development with the queen he can play for example knight c6 and uh, we're gonna cover it in the next lectures and of course the trick is if you play c3 now black is able to play uh, knight h5 and uh, queen b6 right and this is completely different animal um, because uh, black knight is already developed on c6 so we'll check with that later and hope you enjoyed the lecture today and uh, thank you for staying bye bye